In this video, we're going to see an example of how we can work with structures that have pointers in them. When we're working with structures that contain pointers, we need to be careful about how we allocate the memory for those structures. So here's an example where we have a structure that includes pointers. Well, when we define a variable of that type on the stack, we get enough memory to hold those values. And then numbers and string here are both pointers, so they would point to something else, possibly in heap memory, as we've shown here, or they might point to other stack variables. That's also possible. But we can run into a little bit of difficulty when we have a pointer to a structure that also contains pointers. So in this example, we've declared a variable that's a pointer to example t. So the only thing we actually have allocated is this. So if we want to allocate all of these things on the heap, what we're going to have to do is first we have to allocate memory for the structure. Then we need to allocate memory for each of these pointers. Now, again, we could point them to something that already exists, but in most cases, we're going to want to create new memory for each of these to point to. So this is a this is something you have to be careful about. And in the projects, sometimes when you're allocating memory like this, you want to be careful. Are you allocating it as a variable? In which case you already have these members and then you'll just do your allocation here. Or if you're allocating a pointer, you have to first allocate memory for the structure, then memory for each of the fields. Let's see what that looks like in code. I think based on what you've seen with structures so far, it should make sense if the structure has a pointer, we do have to be careful how we initialize it. So here I have a structure that I've defined to be example t that has an integer member, an integer pointer member, and a character pointer member. So I define x to be 14. I define this array to be five integers, which I initialize to one through five. And here I have a character pointer that I have set to the string structures with pointers. So when I declare my structure variable, I can assign each of the fields of that variable to one of these values above because they all have the same type. Remember, an array name can be treated as a pointer. And then to print those out, just like any other field in a structure, I use dot. I'll print the pointer values and the string values for the character pointer field. And then for the integer pointer field, I'll print the pointer and I'll also print the values of the array that it points to. So this is one aspect, and I think that this should be clear as far as how this works. So where this can become a little more difficult is suppose we had an example T pointer so to allocate memory for this, I would need to say malloc size of example t. And I'll need to include standard lib because that's where malloc is. This allocates memory for the structure. Now I could do the same thing I did here. So for the pointer, I can, I only I only have to change these to arrows and that will work perfectly. In fact, I'm even going to copy this code And I'll just change the, the name and then the dot to an arrow. And this is going to work. So let me compile that and run. And you can see they're both pointing to the same thing. So that, that shouldn't be any different. And so now suppose instead of something that already exists, suppose I want to allocate new memory as part of, of this. So for here, I don't want to allocate any new memory here because that's that was allocated when we did this malloc, the, the room for this integer. So we'll say that this is a 10. 
Now here, instead of pointing it to this existing array, I can allocate new memory. And let's allocate four integers. And again, I want to not, I don't want to just say four. I want to say four times the size of an integer. And I'm going to do something similar here for the string. I'm going to say malloc 25 times size of char. So if I compile and run this now, notice it still works. I just get an empty string and I get a bunch of zeros. And I also want to double check that this works. So I'm going to run CPP check just to make sure I'm not missing anything. And I have a memory leak because I forgot to free this memory. Again, this is a main method, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, but I think it's always good practice just to get in the habit so that you don't forget to do this when you need to. So I'll say free struct pointer numbers and also string. So if I do that, let's see if it's happy. Yeah, so it can't find include files. I don't really care about that. So let's compile it, let's run it, and there's my results. So now I want to fill these values. So there's a couple different things I can do. So here I'm going to allocate new memory for the, I've allocated new memory for these to initialize it. So less than four. And then I'll say struct pointer. numbers and I can use array indexing here or pointer arithmetic. I'll use array indexing. Actually, let me use pointer arithmetic plus II is equal to II times 10. Let's say, let's say 11, just so that it's a little more interesting of a number. And then to get something into the string field, and let me say that I'm doing this, I'll do a string copy into struct pointer string and we'll say that this is pointer fun we allocated 25 bytes so we'll just put a 25 bytes there good enough for what we're trying to do here so let's run this let's let's first let's do cpp check so we do have a syntax error and our compiler actually even showed this we're missing a plus right there very good CPP check is relatively clean. So now let's compile. So we have a implicit declaration, not a bug, but I do want to fix that. That comes from string.h. And now if I run this, you can see that I get those new, that new code. Whoops. One other problem is since I don't have five characters anymore, I need to change this to four so that I get valid values. I'm actually surprised that CPP check didn't pick that up, but okay. So 0, 11, 22, 33, those are the values we expect.